Okay, well, first of all, I'd like to thank, uh, well, Claire for organizing this whole activity and, and, and Bert for, the, uh, for this part organization. Yeah, yeah, anyway, uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so I, I would like to talk about, f so first of all, I should say, well, since this is called a workshop, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about work in progress rather than, than something uh, finished. And this is, uh, uh, been working with Matthew Stover on this, and more recently also with Kyung and Katanese. And uh, on the subject of, of well, what is called the uh, uh, the Cartwright Cartwright uh, Steger surface. So I'll explain what that is. Uh, so you know, this is something on fundamental groups. So this is the surface concerns a very particular group acting on the complex hyperbolic plane. Okay, so it's particular. So it's a particular fundamental group. So uh, let me just give you some background here. Uh, suppose you have a, suppose let's say X is a surface of general type. So we know what the churn numbers, C1 square and C2 are positive. And uh, uh, so if we look at the Euler characteristic of O, no? so that's C1 square plus C2 over 12. So this is going to be a positive number, so it's at least one. And then we have Miyaoka's inequality, no? C1 square less than or equal to 3C2. So we have here, this is less than or equal to what? 4 C2 over 12, which is C2 over 3. So if we have a surface of general type, we have that, that uh, C2 is at least 3, the second churn class, or, or what is the same thing, the Euler number, the Euler number of X, or the, or the second churn class is at least 3. And if, it's, if it equals 3, then you must have equality, Miyaoka's inequality, so, so if equals, then, then you must have C1 square. C1 square equals has to be 3C2, which means X is a bulk quotient. So that's, that's what you get uh, uh, from this. So a surface with topological Euler characteristics 3 of general type has to be a bulk quotient. And it's the smallest, it's just the smallest, uh, uh, you know, it's a, a bulk quotient and uh, it's of, of minimal volume. Uh, uh, right, because, you know, the volume, let me, uh, the volume up to, up to some factor, no, is the, is the same as the other number, no, so I will, do like Patrick the other day, there's going to be a, a constant here, uh, 8 pi square somewhere or something like that. The, uh, up, to, up to some some factor, oh, there you are. Okay, so <laughs> in, in, in the same spirit, you know, except here, I don't remember if it's pi square over 8 or whatever, it may be, but anyway, the Euler number is a volume, yeah, so it's of minimal volume. Okay, so how do you get something of minimal volume? Well, uh, so this is so one place to look at the fake projective planes you have. So these are uh, bulk quotients with the, the Betty numbers are 1, 0. So let's say the zeros Betty number first, second, third, and fourth. We take something with those Betty numbers uh, that has a minimal volume. And so those things have been classified. So we know, well, there's a, a classification of this. 
Uh, well, so first of all, I think the, the first example, let, let me just maybe go over here. So the first example was by Mumford in the late 70s. I don't recall exactly when. But uh, so he found one example. Then later, people found some other. Uh, there, were, uh, there was Mumford's example. There were a few more, a few more examples. Uh, so it's clear from the beginning there's only a finite number. But what is a number? Well, uh, uh, then there was progress. Uh, so let me. There was the work of uh, Prasad and Young uh, on the classification. I mean, they, they gave, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of restrictions. I mean, there was a certain amount of classification. Let me, f let me say that this is here. I should also mention Bruno Klingler, who, who proved that, uh, that, the, uh, that the fundamental group, if you have a fake projective plane, he proved that the pi 1 is an arithmetic group acting on the ball. And then using, once you have an arithmetic group using Prasad's volume formula, there are ways to try to compute volumes. And uh, so that was done. Uh, I mean, there were a lot. So l l let, me, let me just say, they, they found there were at least so many classes and not quite. Then a lot of computation. Cartwright and Steger did a lot of computation. Uh, and they found, they found, uh, well, this is what they found. They found, well, th l l l l let me say it this way. What did they compute? They wanted to compute, they found you want to find torsion free. So you want to find, let's say, torsion free arithmetic uh, lattices, let's say, with volume. Volume in the sense or like with, uh, let's say, Euler number equals to 3. So they, there was a classification. They found 51 of them. Uh, okay, and uh, then it was a very curious thing. Of this 51, 50 uh, had to do with division algebra. So uh, 50 were clearly fake projective planes, and the number 51 was rather strange. Uh, it came from a Herme if you know about anything about arithmetic groups acting on the ball, there are two types coming from Hermitian forms or coming from uh, division algebras of degree 3. And uh, uh, so this one, the one, they the one they found was different. And eventually, they found that it was not a fake projective plane. It, 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 it had the, the very numbers were this. So all the characteristics 3, but well those are the very numbers. Strange object. I mean, why should that exist? I don't know. Anyway, so uh, so it's being suggested. Uh, a number of people suggest when the, I mean, the, so so the, the Cartwright Steger surface is the the ball. So let me just, you know, what I mean by the Cartwright Steger surface would be the ball modulo this arithmetic group. So let me call it to be the unit ball modulo, the cartwright Steger group, which is going to be the arithmetic group in question. Uh, some people have suggested that this should start not stand not for cartwright Steger but computer science, because that's that, that, that's a way that this manifold is known. Okay, I mean, the, so I'll tell you, and you know what many people want to do. Uh, one of the things we would like to have is another description of this manifold. Try to find something in nature somewhere. 
some surface of general type with those ready numbers and C1 squared equals 3C2 and so on. I mean, okay. uh, so I would like to explain to you first, you know, how, how, how do we know what we know about this. So, uh, so I want to give you a description. And if you want a reference, I think uh, I started to write, there's a URL to, which is much too long. So if you want a reference, I can give you a precise reference to some lectures by Cartwright uh, that, that contain a lot of, uh, you know, uh, things that you would need if you want to check some of the things I'm saying. But let me, let me tell you where this comes from. Uh, so I'll give you a description of this as much as I can. So let's start from the Delin Mostow lattices. Uh, there is one particular one of smallest volume. Yeah? Uh, it's, uh, so th so th if, if you're familiar, I mean, if you want, if you want to look up in the papers of Delin and Mostow, you, you know, there was a certain notation, certain numbers. So let me follow the notation and denominator 12. It's a, so it's a, if, if, you, if you want to find the description of this, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you what you need to know. But uh, this, uh, the group coming from this is what, uh, well, there's a certain arrangement of lines. So what, does, what do these numbers mean? So y you take moduli of five points on the sphere with certain weights and certain hypergeometric functions, and then they uniformize, a usually a sometimes a a an arrangement uh, in P2. Maybe you put weight one quarter here, and uh, so, so you have this uh, six lines, three of them carry a weight one quarter. <coughs> So let's see, the edges of this uh, triangle carry weight one quarter, and uh, the ones going to the center carry weight two thirds. So that's not quite an orbifold. There's some kind of co-manifold or something like that. But there is a certain orbifold. One has to, so this is a situation where you have to divide by the action of the symmetric group. And then you get an orbifold. And let me just draw that orbifold. So first of all, if I divide P2 by the action of the symmetric group, one way to think of that would be as the weighted projective space P1, 2, 3, no? Because by us, I mean, if these are the roots of a polynomial, the 1, 2, 3 would be the coefficients of the given polynomial. And what happens is, well, This is the orbifold in question. This three lines with weight one quarter will go to a single line with weight one quarter. The things with weight two thirds, well, they are where two roots come together. That's a discriminant. We all know it's a cospidal cubic. And uh, this, uh, so here is a, just some special points. There is a cusp. There is a, uh, a, pr a place where this become tangent because, you know, the two of these come together. I mean, if you look at, then there are a few other places. So let me put, let me, let me just say there is a group here, let's say. So, so I want to, so, so there's an orbifold should give you a certain, certain uh, groups in here. So the group here is a, a, a sh shepherd, let me call it ST10, Shepard Todd group number 10 in their table, which is a group of order 288. It's a, a complex reflection group. Here you get Shepard Todd number 4, which is a group of order 24. So these are the two non abelian groups that you get. Um, and then here you get what? This is, this is of degree four, this is of degree three. So, so, so here you're going to get a cyclic group of order four, a cyclic group of order three. There's going to be some point here 
corresponding to this, which will get a cyclic group of order two, plus a cyclic group of order four, and, and then there is uh, one other point somewhere, an isolated point, which is uh, uh, where you get a cyclic group of order three, but it, it's uh, an A2 singularity. And uh, it comes from the following point here. If I take the point one, omega, omega squared, uh, where omega is a primitive cube root of unity, that's a fixed point here. And uh, so um, so th this, is, this is the orbifold that you get. So you, you put certain gr uh, groups in here. I've given you the orders of the groups so from that. You can compute chi orbifold. Let me call this dm for two, 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 two comps, yeah, two dimensional orbifold. This is a two complex dimensional orbifold. But, and it's not the only modulo from the group that acts on it. Yeah, so, so this is, so the theorem is this is the unit ball. So, so this orbifold, let, let me call it x. The Lin Moscow is the unit ball in C2 divided by some group with torsion. No, 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 no. I, I, I'm giving you this space. I mean, well, it has a, some mild singularities. But let us think of this as a projective plane to first approximation. And in there, I'm giving you some more before. Lo I mean, I, I, I'm telling you. Uh, oh, I, I forgot here. This is a single group of order three. Uh, so I, I'm giving you uh, uh, an, uh, uh, orb orbifold data. So they're telling you each point. So every point on this line has a stabilizer of order, single group of order four. So it's a complex reflection. So this is, so wh wh whatever this group is, is a group generated by complex reflections. And uh, uh, from there you can see, uh, uh, I mean, so, so l later, I, uh, so the reason I draw these pictures, I want to tell you something about the elements of finite order in this group. And, and, and uh, so, so the whatever this Cartwright, so Cartwright's Stigo surface is going to be, is going to be a covering or before of the uh, announce a manifold that covers this, and the group will be a torsion-free subgroup of this, okay? Well, in order to see certain elements, I wanted to give you this, this picture, okay? Um, so this, uh, but, but the, the theorem was false. If you read the papers of Delina and Moster, you will see that this data gives you a complex hyperbolic orbifold. This is a group acting on the, unit ball in C2, that if you take the quotient by that group, you get this space with this orbifold data. So that, that it gives you a picture of all the elements of finite order and what they, they do. Uh, well, so, so uh, let me tell you, so, oh, I, I didn't write that down. It's one over 288. And what is known about this, this is the, so Stover has proved that this is the arithmetic, arithmetic uh, orbifold, let's say complex hyperbolic two-dimensional orbifold of minimal volume, minimal. Sorry? Right. 
Yeah, yeah, but this is a two dimension. I mean, no, I'm just saying by yeah. analogy. But by, by, by analogy, yeah, I guess I, I'm not. I'm, I'm, maybe you can answer that. Okay. Oh, thanks. Uh, anyway, so, so I just want to keep this picture here. I will be using it from time to time. Uh, and then, oh, yeah. So for, for your question, so this is the arithmetic, arithmetic one of, mini but no, nobody knows the minimal volume. So uh, uh, arithmetic of minimal volume. Uh, among the ar arithmetic, this guy has a minimal volume. That's known. Quite likely. Well, quite likely, yeah. But uh, that's, that's, uh, Anyway, so uh, so this fellow here, so 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 I have so so what, so the, the the theorem then is the following: what what these people found in their search for these groups, what they found is that this uh, uh, so gamma C S is a subgroup of gamma of this Delin Mostow and is. Uh, th th it's, this is a torsion free, it's a torsion free subgroup of index, well, unfortunately, it's rather high, 864, no? Well, I mean, it, that's why it would have to be if it has other characteristics, three, no? It has to be three, you know, three times, okay? So, so this is, this is what it is. So there's a torsion-free subgroup of, of this index, and so they found that by you know I mean so so that's so so what the reason we know about this manifold is that by using magma or whatever they were able to find a torsion-free subgroup of in index 864, and then they also found that its abelianization is a free abelian group of rank two. Magma can compute abelianizations very quickly and just, I mean, I've done it many times, I keep putting my, my computer and it says, you know, free abelian group rank two, but well, so, so I hope it's doing it right. But anyway, so, so the abelianize, so that's how we know about it. And so I said I wanted to keep, so let me keep this picture here. And let me keep another picture. Uh, let's see, maybe I can put it in here. Uh, sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I'll tell you in a second. Uh, or, or I can tell you what is. It's a Fermat. It's a Fermat, and it's, and it's going to follow from what I'm going to put on the, on the board next. Oh, and by the way, the title I said, this surface and some related surfaces, I was going to talk about some other surface in the same commensurability class that may help us understand this one, but I probably won't get to that. But just if you were wondering what might relate, I, I'm, go I'm, go I'm going to, to start a, a diagram here. I'm going to put here this group and this group. Uh, so this is here is index 864. So the first thing, I mean, is this normal in here? Well, it's very far from normal. In fact, it's of index three in its normalizer. So uh, the of index three here is the normalizer. Let me call it NCS, the normalizer. And this is index 288. So it's very far from normal. And then this actually, this group is PU to one of the ring of integers in some number field k, so k is uh, the group of uh, you know 12 roots of unity. Uh, so th this has a subgroup of index three, a PSU, uh, yeah, 288. Um, and in fact, uh, the Th these are the only, I mean, the only subgroups in, be th 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 there are no more subgroups in between these two. 
Okay, the, the, the only subgroups of this containing this are the normalizer and then this other group, a certain normal subgroup of. Okay, so so they're very. There's, there's not much in between the two. Twelve. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, as you can see from the three and four in here, that uh, anyway. Uh, no, 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 no. no. Well, uh, there are going to be some congruent subgroups. In fact, a way to understand this is to to take congruent subgroups here of this. Let, let me put some congruent subgroups on a little bit later, okay? But uh, the, the, there are some congruent subgroups that help us understand this and. Uh, the intersection here with the congruent subgroup is of index 21. So, okay. so I'll put that on later if I have the, the time. But uh, uh, just as a first approximation, let me say that. So there you can see now that, the, uh, that uh, this fellow has an automorphism of order 3. You know, so the Albanese is going to have an automorphism of order 3. And then you have to convince yourself that that is not, I mean, a four there's three, not one. <laughs> okay? You convince yourself of that is a four there one. And a four there three, and not one. So the so what you get from, from this is you get that the Albanese uh, so the Albanese of this is a Fermat elliptic curve. Okay? And, uh, and let me call sigma, let me call this fellow, and then uh, sigma is this automorphism of, of this, of order three sigma cubed is the identity, okay? So that's, uh, so let's, let's begin with that. And then, so, okay, so that's, so, so, uh, so what subgroups, how do they find, I mean, le, le, let me just say something about this group here, the, the, the group of order 288 that comes up in here. It, so all, all of these are complex reflection groups, and this is one that maps to the octahedral group with kernel cyclic of order 12. So the structure of this group is, let me see, center, let me just say center, uh, let me put the center is cyclic of order 12. And it maps onto the octahedral group. And you can see that from, uh, you know, this is, you have something of degree four and something of degree three that satisfy a braid relation. And uh, you can compute that what that is. And then here, this one maps onto the tetrahedral group with the, center of cyclic of order two. So that's okay, uh, so the next question is what is the Albanese map? So let's look at the, so how, so we have, I have to write this diagram in a sensible way, I may have to look at my notes, but let, 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 let me just start and let's come in or maybe alpha the Albanese map. Uh, so we have this automorphism here of order three, so it's a morphism of order three. So we want to know something about the fibers um, of that map. So how many, so how many singular fibers and how do they relate to the uh, Albanese and, and so on, I mean to the, to, to this automorphism. So let me, let me just tell you what the facts are and uh, proving them may, I mean, it, it would take too long. So, so le le let, me, let me just tell you about this map. It has three singular fibers, uh, 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 which are, uh, you know, reduced, and each one has one node. So the simplest, the simplest uh, uh, possible. 
And then, so, so you can see, I mean, there, there is, I mean, wh wh when you have a vibration, no, you have that, uh, you have, uh, you know, the, say that you can assign a, 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 a number, a, a mu i, like a Milner number or something to each fiber, and the sum of the mu i is, go is going to be something like the Euler characteristic of the base, Euler characteristic of the fiber. Uh, 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 this plus this is equal to the Euler characteristic of the total space. There's a formula like that, so this is three, and uh, the base, well, the base is A, which so this is zero. So the sum of all the numbers you dash the singularities is three. So this is the simplest possible way. But, but you know, there are many other possibilities, so you have to start studying many cases and so on. Sorry? Ah, <laughs> if you could tell me, <laughs> everybody would like to know that. <laughs> That's, that's what nobody, nobody knows. As far, as far as I can tell, nobody, I, I don't know it. <laughs> Catanese doesn't know it. None of these people, I mean, uh, 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 we, that's what we would like to know. That's I mean, that, that would be a big advance to know what the genus of, the, the problem is the only characteristic of the base is zero. So any formula that you write down for the genus says <laughs> zero times the genus equals zero. Okay, so, uh, you know, that's, but anyway, that, so, so the genus, so this is a question, genus of the fiber, well, it's congruent to one mod three, that's one thing, uh, which, which is going, uh, congruent to one mod three, so it's at least four. Uh, that's about the only thing I know, okay? But, uh, you know, that's, so that, that would be a good thing to know, I mean, to know the, the genus of the fiber because, you know, that, but anyway, I mean, that, 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 that's certainly the, the first thing one should know. See, because you see, so far, but what do we know? We know, we know, th we, we, we know this group, no? I mean, it's on a presentation, I mean, this is the lean most group, we know that, I mean, that's, well, so, but then these people take certain, uh, they take certain generators for a subgroup and they check the distortion free uh, in, the, in this index and has this abelianization and has this normalizer and so on, okay? And oh, and also another thing I, well, maybe I'll write it later, something about the, the, uh, the uh, abelianization of the normalizer. I'll, I'll, I'll put that in a minute. But anyway, this is, this is one of the, this is the main question that nobody knows, the genus of the fiber. Um, okay, um, so let's see where to go from here. So, so, uh, so okay, so le le let me see. So what we know is that there are, so there are three singular, f so if here is the, the Albanese, it has the, uh, that's not a very good picture. You should probably draw the, the three, s I mean, the triangle. A anyway, but 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 I have this fiber <coughs> over here. So I know, so there are the singular fibers are permuted, and then there are three invariant fibers. So there are three fibers. So there are, uh, I mean, sigma, sigma has uh, three fixed points on the Albanese, so, the, so over that, so they are, so that means uh, sigma has uh, three invariant fibers, no? On X, so there are going to be three fibers here that are invariant, and that's a general fiber, so, 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 so uh, well, uh, then we also need to know one thing, so each fiber has three fixed points, each, each uh, fiber has uh, three fixed points. Well, in, in fact, uh, 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 and, and in fact, uh, so, so you can you can do all sorts of you can do Lefschetz form. I mean, you can start experimenting Lefschetz formulas, holomorphic Lefschetz formulas, and so on. And what you find, what you find is that sigma, so so sigma 
has nine fixed points. And there are uh, three on each fiber. On each fiber. And uh, they are distributed in the following way. Um, the, uh, so one fiber, one fiber. So, so I I if I look at uh, at the differential at a fixed point, it can be either w w one, one fiber uh, has all, all, all fixed points of the type, let's say, a diagonal matrix. So the differential at the fixed point is a diagonal matrix. So one fiber ha has all like this, and, and, and the, uh, the remain remaining two fibers are of this type. So this is like a, like so, 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 so we, we can see where they lie, where they are in this picture. In this picture, if you look at the center of this group, uh, the center of this group fixes this uh, point, and it, ha it has to have diagonal eigenvalues. I mean, I, I mean the, it, ha it has to be a scalar matrix. The differential has to be a scalar matrix here, because it has to preserve uh, I mean, there, there are all these mirrors of, I mean, so if I were to draw a, a picture at this point, what, well, if I were to look at the point in the surface that lies above this, I would see uh, the mirrors of this reflection group going through there. They have to be preserved by that, so it has to be a scalar matrix. It cannot be the other type. Uh, so, so. Um, so anyway, so there are three fixed points on each fiber. Let me just. No, no fixed points on the, no, no. The, 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 the singular fibers are permuted by the, by the, uh, uh, by the uh, automorphism. They are permuted. So, uh, so you have. So that's the picture. And actually, uh, let me just say, well, so, so where are they? Where are the fixed points in this picture? So, so the the ones of the, the, the scalar matrices uh, lie over this, and then the other ones lie over this. Okay, the uh, the, the ones. Uh, the omega omega square, the diagonal but not square, have to lie over this point. Okay, and uh, but then you know how how do we see this distribution? Well, actually, if you know that the fixed point, I mean, you, you can derive this in various ways, but let me just show you one neat way to derive this. Is uh, if I can draw this diagram. Let me let me uh, let me try to draw a diagram here that goes with that. It's the, the things that you can do with magma and check conjugacy classes and so on. So what are uh, so so what we need uh, here? I probably should put some congruent subgroups, but I I uh, I uh, if I want to justify this, I'll have to put some congruent subgroups in there. But let me see. We, I have this. I better look at my notes to, f to, to write the diagram in a, in a efficient way. Let me see where, where I have this diagram. Uh -huh. OK. So I have this group contained within the three in its normalizer. And this maps to its abelianization, which is a free abelian group of rank three acting on the complex plane. And that's contained with index three in the triangle group, three, the three, three, three triangle group. And uh, we get a commutative, so we get a commutative, a commutative diagram like this, which we actually get, so the way 
the way we get this, this, uh, uh, how do we get this surjection? This is, uh, I mean, th th this one, we know this C2 is gamma divided by its commutator subgroup. And then this one here is the normalizer divided by the commutator subgroup of gamma. Mm -hmm. This is normal in here, and uh, this is actually the 333 triangle group. And, and, uh, and then, the ability, uh, then you use magma to compute various things. Magma gives you the abelianizations here that N CS, the, the normalizer abelianized is uh, a direct sum of two groups of index three and uh, the same thing for the 333 triangle group. It's the same. I mean, they're both equal to that. And uh, uh, what happens, what, what are the fixed points? So fixed points, well, we can figure out in various ways that there are nine of them, and they correspond to conjugacy classes of elements of order three, certain elements of order three in the group, and conjugacy classes uh, in these groups are going to map, that the, the, a well-defined map to the abelianization. So what happens is this CMO3 for CMO3 is keeping track of the, the nine fixed points. And uh, the, the, we get a, a natural, uh, I mean, I mean, this diagram of groups it, it corresponds to that diagram of, of fixed points. So the, 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 the conjugacy classes you can read off from here and the map from conjugacy classes up in the surface to points on the torus, you can read, you can read through here. So for, from here you can see that there have to be uh, three fixed points on every fiber. Now, one fiber is uh, th then to see the types, I guess you can see that one fiber from this picture, you see that one fiber must have all of the, uh, have those uh, fixed point, I mean, fixed points of this type, and then from the holomorphic Lepsius formula, you can figure out what that the other fixed points have to be. But anyway, so, so this, so from doing group theory, you can, deduce many of, of these things. Uh, but unfortunately, not the genus of the fiber. That's still the, the uh, big mystery. There's one nice thing, one, one thing here that interests some of us is uh, uh, we have this vibration. I think I raised now, I mean, it has no, no singular fiber. So, so I, I'm, I'm sorry, no uh, multiple fibers, okay? Uh, so, 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 yes, yes, oh, I, 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 I'm sorry, yes, I should have said that they are, they are irreducible, yes, I mean, again, that follows from this three, I mean, because, oh, I, I'm sorry, it also follows from these numbers and the H11, one one. I mean, so, so I, I didn't write down the Hush numbers, I, I wrote here the bedding numbers, I should have written down the, the Hush numbers. So H11 is 3, H20 is 1, and sigma acts trivially on, on holomorphic two forms. There are, there are various, I mean, w one can deduce many other things from here. But let me, let me just say one thing that, that follows from here. If I look at the map pi 1 of x, uh, the abelianization, the, the pi 1 of x to, uh, to well, the, the abelianization to, uh, to uh, I don't know, H1 of X. See, the kernel here, the, if I look at the kernel here, it's finitely generated. So when you have no multiple fibers, I think that's, uh, uh, I learned that from Nori, from a theorem of Nori that, that, uh, that so, so this is of interest, Mohan. You've probably been asking this question. I mean, uh, I know you will be interested in this. No, so, so I, I, it's hard to find examples. It's finally generated kernel. And sometimes it's not clear if there are any or not. And usually the maps 
that you find, say, maybe the abelian variety factors to a curve of higher genus. So then the kernel is very large. So, um, so uh, this is of interest in some circles to have examples like of this nature. Okay, um, and it is uh, so that's one. So one fact about this. Uh, okay, okay. So uh, let, let's suppose suppose you have a. Uh, let me let me erase this now. Uh, suppose I have a map. Uh, a, a surface, a, a surface over a curve, and let's suppose uh, alpha. Let's l let me say smooth. Let's say smooth. Let, let's say a smooth surface, and and a smooth curve. I, I probably through a more generality. Le let me assume that the gener general fiber, let's say, is connected, and. Uh, and that uh, the, the, the there are no multiple fibers. Then, uh, then the uh, pi one. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, multiplic. I mean that. Well, that the uh, well, if you have a reducible fiber, the 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 GCD of it, it, it's one, no? Then then the conclusion is that pi one of the general fiber maps maps onto the kernel. Pi one of the general fiber maps uh, and here uh, maps onto maps onto the kernel. Of uh, you know pi one of x to uh, to pi one of c. Oh, I, I don't. I, 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 I mean, I, I, I mean, I've learned it in various ways, but I, I'm not, not familiar with that one. I'm familiar with Norris paper, and I'm familiar with other ways of doing it by more theory. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, that uh, okay, well, anyway, anyway so, so for the topological fundamental group. That, okay, that's not right for the topological fundamental group. And, uh, well, anyway, so that, so it was interesting, so kernel is finally generated, the kernel of the map to the Abelian. I don't think there were any examples known of a bulk quotient with, with that property. And uh, then, let me see. Uh, so genus, so so the genus, so the fact. So where can one, one try to find this surface? So the, so the problem here is you know we don't even know the genus of the general fiber. How are we going to find? The surface in some other way, so we would like to have s some other way. Um, there is one fact. So the fact that there are no. Uh, le 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 let me just tell you a couple other facts. Uh, I think I. Let me leave this diagram here <coughs> and uh, tell you a couple. A couple other facts uh, uh, is uh, the relative so the the, the, the relative canonical map so you have uh, this surface mapping over the Albanese and then over we have over the Albanese we have uh, the 
the projective bundle of f lower star of omega x over a, you know, which is omega x, let's see. Uh, so, and we have uh, the, the relative, relative canonical. And the fact, well, so, so uh, either it's by rash, I mean, if you look at each fiber, it's either uh, by rational or you have a hyperetic curve and, and of degree two. Well, since there are no, no intermediate subgroups here, you, you, ca can, you cannot have a sub, you cannot have anything of index two. So, so this map, the fact that there are no intermediate subgroups there means that uh, the relative canonical map is by rational on twice image. So that's one fact. And then there's another fact about ellipt I mean, ab about, uh, in, in the case, uh, the, the basis on abelian variety is this, you can realize this in a different way. You can, re this is isomorphic to taking a symmetric product of this curve. So. Uh, so what is this? So uh, whatever that genus is, if I take the G4 symmetric product of the abelian variety mapping onto the abelian variety, this is a, a PG minus one bundle over here. And uh, uh, I don't know, this is something Cardanese tells me that this is essentially the same as the, it, it, it takes a certain amount of work, but you know, Cardanese knows the structure of this sheaves very well, and somehow he, so, 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 so in, in other words, the, 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 there should be a map. So I want to say here, is, here is the Albanese. Then whatever the genus is of the fibers, if you take the default symmetric power, there has to be a map, or at least a, a rational map from here to here. So one, so one way to try to find the surface would be. Well, for if can you think for any g <laughs> g tuples in the Fermat curve that have some special property? I mean, so this is saying whatever the, the surface is is a surface made of g tuples of points on the Fermat curve I mean, on order g tuples. So, can you think of any interesting <laughs> <laughs> of any interesting g tuples on the Fermat curve? Uh, and that, that would be one place to look for this. So that's, that's one thing. And uh, you don't know what G is. No, no, no. So, but, so, so for, for what G are there interesting G tuples? So, so maybe you can you, you, you change the question. For which G are there interesting G tuples? <laughs> uh, a surface. Anyway, so this is, so we are very ignorant on this thing. So that's why I say, you know, work work in progress, uh, but this is, I think, what people know. I mean, there are many people interested in, in this surface that have been working on this. Like, you know, I mentioned the people I've been working with, but uh, you know, other people like, like Dolgachev also has looked very much at this surface. I think he, probably, probably everything I've said here, he knows very well, too, in some the different way, but, uh, uh, and, uh, Maybe it's a good place. I was wanted to say a couple of things. Maybe it's a good place to stop. So let me. <laughs> oh, how do this? Oh, it, 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 take take the, the group acting on the, the, the that, that group distortion and then give us certain generators. It's a take a subgroup. So and they, 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 give, they give certain generators. And so I, the by, generators. by generators, yeah. So, so what they do is they, they write, for some reason, four gen. So, so th th this group of yours here is generated by that group of two order 288 and one other element. So they take. Three particular generators for the group of order 288. I mean, two suffice, but they take a particular three 
plus one other generator, uh, which, which is somewhere in, in, the, in the, uh, the elliptic, I mean, the discriminant, and write down four, I, uh, write down, I think, four words, and, 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 and that's, that's how they describe it. I'm oh, sorry, recall. Let, let me just double check. <laughs> Okay, yeah, they write down three, no, I'm sorry, three generators. They write down, they, 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 oh, they write a presentation of the big group there using four generators, and then they select three words, and the group generated by those. And, you know, uh, how they found this, they don't really, I mean, I, I don't have an explanation here. They said they had to, well, I mean, they say, they, they give some explanation, but it, it's, you know, it's beyond the limits of magma to find subgroups <laughs> of, of, of index 864. You can find subgroups of index 10, maybe. <laughs> uh, so they say they, they, they had, they, they, in these notes here uh, that they're posted in this there on symposium, you know, you can, uh, they, they, they just say a word, but not much explanation. They, they somehow they search. In some intelligent way, I assume, to find this, uh, uh, this, uh, yeah. Right. Right, right. Right, right. So, so the, the, the thing here is, this one is not quite a configure, the, the, the problem, I mean, this is, this is the, the thing, except what, you need to first, if, if you want, the configuration uh, to, to be an orbifold, you first have to divide by the symmetric group. I mean, this is what most I would call <laughs> sigma int rather than int or something. Yeah, sigma integral condition rather than the integral. It does it so uh, no. Oh, oh. Well, actually, uh, you know, the, 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 there is something I, let me put it this way, I'm quoting various people and so on, but uh, th there is something last time, I mean, la la last weekend, t talking to Matthew Stover, we weren't quite sure that these people actually f consider everything. I mean, uh, th 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 it could conceivably be that this is also contained in some other ma maximal lattice. So, so, so this is one maximal lattice that contains this. It's well, I think we could check that it was not contained in any other maximal lattice, but we were not 100% sure. I mean, we, 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 we seem to be able to prove it, but we couldn't find an independent, I mean, we couldn't find an obvious reason. And there is and one, one other lattice, that is, I mean, when I said related surfaces, there is a lattice, there is this lattice, a size-wise integrality condition, that may contain, may, uh, may, may contain this, uh, or, or maybe uh, uh, the, 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 there were a few other lattices uh, that we didn't check. We, we, I mean, uh, it, seemed, it seemed to us that they could not contain this surface, but, uh, this group, but I mean, uh, and, th and that's what the claim from, you know, I mean, the claim here is that, that you know, this is the full automorphism group, I mean, but you know, the, the, you know, it's very easy to make errors here, so, so I don't want to. Uh, but uh, anyway, did that answer your question? Or? So, so more or less, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, uh, I mean, pro I, 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 I mean, I, I can figure it out probably, but I, I, I don't know it right. I mean, ask me in another hour. I can, t <laughs> I, I can tell you if I know anything about it, but right now I don't. No, th th this is not, I mean, this is not even a normal subgroup. Oh, yeah, I, it, I mean, the, the, there is a congruent subgroup. The, the, it contains, with index 21, uh, the, 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 there's a congruent subgroup. If you take uh, P, PSU of uh, the, the, the kernel, if, if you take, if you take the kernel of, PSU to one, okay to PSU uh, three, three, uh, 
three nine or whatever it is three uh, uh, yeah three uh, or three three whatever yeah, three right. I mean, they, 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 there's a, a group of order, order six house. Uh, they, they, there's a group of this order. Well, you're saying, you're saying it is a congruence. It, it contains a congruent subgroup. Oh, oh OK. Oh, the, oh, I, 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 I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not familiar with, <laughs> with the sort of this of, of the language. Yeah, yeah. It is. It contains a congruent subgroup. Uh, and OK, thanks, thanks very much. Yeah, that, that's what it means. OK. Uh, I, I was taking the is as in a literal sense. It contains a congruence of group. Yeah. Sorry? Oh, oh, the, the prime here is the, the, the prime above 3. So if P3 is a unique P3, is the prime above 3. And uh, uh, then you, that, that gives you this group. Yeah, one prime above above three and it contains that. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. And uh Oh yes, 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 yes. Yes, I, I think so, I, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. Uh, uh, you, you mean the, the... Oh, yes, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So, so I mean, uh, one can do kind of computations like that. Some of the things we know about this group, some of the things I said in there. Right. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, I don't. I have no idea how magma finds normal finds normalizers. Because here, if you notice the group of order twenty one, you look for the normalizer. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. So I I, I sort of you know I, I haven't done that many of the computations myself. I have. To, I mean I you know I, I I use magma a little bit, but I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, but you know my. I, Matthew Stover, uh, uh, it's good to have a young collaborator who's, who uses computers all the time, and, and he always tells me this is true, this is true, this is true, and, and he's very reli reliable, but, but uh, I, many of the things I don't know, I mean, like for instance, well actually, he tells me some things, and then I, I go use magma and verify them, like he tells me like, this congruent subgroup, I mean, the, the one, so, then inside the normal, if I look at this, so the normalizer is also, I mean, here it goes into a PU, mm -hmm. and he tells me that the only elements of order three are the ones, you know, that come up in there. I mean, the, 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 mm -hmm. so, so, so I, I verify that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, and then he tells me other things. W one thing I didn't uh, mention, I could have mentioned, I mean, I s one of the things that interests me the most here is the, the geodesic, the complex geodesics, I mean, the, the, the mirrors and what they, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there, there are various things about the mirrors of the complex reflections, wh what, what they look like in here, yes. that, that one, uh, it seems to me they are not, they are not embedded. And uh, we could, like, they have, and in fact, they do not seem to have negative self-interest.